Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the exercise four, taxiing the preparatory ground instruction. Uh, prior uh, to kind of one of your first lessons, you should have looked through uh, exercise four in your flight training manual. Just like the past few lessons, this is not one specific lesson that your instructor will be taking you up uh, to do. It's just something you're going to be practicing on every uh, lesson you have to taxi out. And this is just kind of some of the basic introductory material that you should uh, know uh, when you have to taxi an aircraft. When taxiing an aircraft, you should be familiar with the airport markings. You can take a look at these markings in your AIM, in the AGA section. Kind of the important ones are your hold short markings, which is uh, one or two solid lines followed by one or two dashed lines. Those are the hold short markings before a runway. Yeah, you don't want to cross those unless you have uh, clearance from air traffic control. We also have center line markings. We have uh, runway direction markings like the runway numbering system. So runway, let's say here, 19, that's 190 degrees magnetic. Uh, that's the direction that you're going to be taking off. You might have center line markings. And uh, so you can go through that with your instructor. Your instructor will be pointing that out as you as you go flying. But I think the important, the two important runway markings are the runway numbering system uh, that are the uh, degrees magnetic, as well as the hold short lines. Here are some other uh, runway markings. We have the red markings, which tell you the different types of runways. Uh, then we have our yellow and black markings, taxiway locations. And then uh, on the right-hand side, uh, kind of some other, here are some other markings. So you can just take a look at those uh, markings. Uh, the other one that's worth mentioning, bottom left, the black with the white four. Uh, that would be, if you're rolling down the runway, that will tell you 4,000 feet of runway length remaining. You'll get used to these markings as you taxi around. It'll become pretty obvious uh, which is which. Runways are marked with numbers. Uh, their degrees magnetic. Taxiways are marked in letters and then the phonetic alphabet. So taxiway A is called taxiway alpha. Let's talk about radio communication. So before you taxi the aircraft, so you've just started the engine, uh, you finish the checklist, you're going to do your after start checklist and you're going to set your instruments and radios. So that would be your heading indicator and your altimeter. Your altimeter, you're going to be getting that information from your ATIS. We'll talk about that uh, sometime uh, later. And you're going to be getting your ATIS, your automated terminal information service. That's covered in your ground school at all. Uh, as well, it's uh, used to reduce frequency congestion. It's a pre-recorded message with the uh, with the runway in use and the uh, weather and any applicable no temps. And then you're going to be ready uh, to taxi. So you're going to call ground. So here's an example. It's Kitchener Ground. This is a Cessna 150 Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie with information Echo. So who who you're calling? The Kitchener Ground. Who you are at Cessna 150 Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie. So that's G A D C is the registration. That's in phonetics and the information echo. That's the ATIS, and you'll you'll hear that when you listen to the ATIS. Again, you have more information on your ground school. Hopefully, you've worked your way through that. So that's called your initial call, and what that allows the air traffic controller to do is write down your information on their strip and kind of get ready for that. If you just all of a sudden start rattling out everything you want, well, they they don't know that you're calling. They have to quickly grab a pen. By the time they have their pen, uh, you've already you know rambled on everything, and they might have to ask you to to start over. Okay, so after you've made the initial call, they're going to come back to you and say, Alpha Bravo Charlie, this is Kitchener Ground, go ahead. And then you're going to say, Kitchener Ground, Alpha Bravo Charlie, so who you are, where you are, at apron six, request taxi clearance for VFR flight Ottawa at 7,500 feet. So what you want. And all of your radio communications follow that pattern, who you are, where you are, and what you want to do. And a lot of people find talking on the radio rather intimidating. But really, that's just the pattern. And, and once you know the basics of it, it's just regular talking. Uh, again, who you are, where you are, and what you want to do. Important thing is that when you're talking air traffic control, you must read back hold short instructions. So you don't need to read back every single clearance that air traffic control gives you. But you do have to read back if they say hold short runway, let's say 25. Let's say we're at an uncontrolled airport. Uh, there is no control tower. Let's say Stratford is an example. So in Stratford, we're just going to call Stratford traffic, Alpha Bravo Charlie, taxiing position runway 35 for VFR flight to Kitchener at 3,500 feet. 
The required radio calls and uncontrolled airport are prior to entering the maneuvering area, pos taking position on the runway, and once you're clear of the circuit. So your next call, let's say that this one was uh, that you're taxing to position runway 35, so it'll be the first one prior to entering the maneuvering area. Then you would say, uh, strive for traffic, Alpha Bravo Charlie, uh, taxing, uh, sorry, that would be taxing to position runway 35. So that'll be the second one. And then once you're airborne, you would just say Alpha Bravo Charlie is five miles west of Stratford on route Kitchener, 3,500 feet. So let's talk about the procedure when you're actually taxing. So once you start taxing, there's three things that you need to remember and keep these three things in mind for your flight test. The first is a brake check. So just as you start rolling, just tap the brakes lightly, make sure they work uh, and make sure you have uh, pressure there. Pretty simple to do. Uh, so that's on the on the brake pedal or on the rudder pedals. The top of the pedals are where you use the brakes. Uh, you're going to check your instruments. So in a turn, you're going to make sure your heading indicator and turn coordinator and compass are turning the way they're supposed to. And then lastly, what you want to do is have your ailerons and your flight controls into uh, the proper uh, position and and proper position with regards to the wind. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure why you do this because the idea is that, well, it, it'll prevent you from flipping over. But if the wind's so strong that it could flip you over if you didn't do this, it's probably too strong for you to be going flying anyway. Uh, so I don't know, you have to do this, you have to know how to do it, but I'm not quite sure the rationale. So if the wind is coming anywhere in front of you, you're just going to keep neutral elevator and you're just going to turn the ailerons into the wind. If you have a tailwind, you're going to push forward and go opposite. So it's, it's pretty basic, and you're going to be expected to do that on your flight test. On your flight test, you're going to be expected to do those things, brake check, uh, controls into the wind, as were, as were discussed. You have to safely maneuver and have appropriate taxi speeds. So uh, this is all situation dependent. I generally say, uh, let's say it's wide open, you're on a taxiway, you go to the speed of a, a bicycle, 20 kilometers an hour or so, you might go down to walking speed when you're in the on the ramp or vicinity of the other aircraft. Obviously, you have to follow air traffic control uh, clearances and directions and uh, and taxi safely to the uh, runway and back in use and also constant vigilance. So taxiing is actually the most common time that you're going to damage an aircraft. People run into things, people run into you. Um, I have never uh damaged an aircraft flying uh the aircraft but the closest i've ever seen is taxiing actually a regional jet a uh, one time years ago and somebody almost drove into us and it's only only because we kind of hit the brakes at the last minute sorry that was a catering truck it wasn't another pilot it was a catering truck not paying attention uh, i got cut off a few times uh, taxiing a 737 uh, somebody in la one time cut me off with a with an suv uh, one of the airport workers so things like that uh, kind of really reinforce the vigilance that you have to uh, play when when uh, taxiing. Okay, let's review the three things that you have to do uh, for taxiing. You're going to have to do a brake check, an instrument check, and have your con flight controls in the correct position. That concludes this lesson on taxiing. Uh, hopefully you've learned something for it. And uh, your next lesson, we're going to be discussing attitudes and movements. Uh, thanks for joining me.